Hello and welcome to the League 2 Predictions from the On Sport Podcast. I'm Chris Avery and with me as always is Mr. Daniel Cody. We have got some good news for you. We have set up a fantasy EFL league. Uh, if you want to join in on the fantasy football front, it's you can follow us on what, Cody? Uh, you can just follow the link down in the description to join a league and pick your team, which bizarrely is seven players rather than 11 and two teams. Don't ask me. I didn't make the system. The EFL did, so you can blame them. Uh, right, today we're going to do League 2 predictions, uh, a very tough league as well as all the others. Uh, we're going to predict the bottom two, the teams in the playoffs, and the three teams getting promoted to League 1. So we're going to start off with the bottom two. Uh, who's going to finish in 24th place and relegated out of the Football League? I found the bottom really hard, I've got to be honest. I will just say quickly as well, like yesterday's, we'll put the notes for all the teams that don't get a mention in this episode. Absolutely. In the, Absolutely. Uh, the comments and a link as well. But but, but be nice. It, we, what we do predictions, they are lighthearted. So please, obviously, if you give us your prediction down in the comments. Obviously, don't forget to like the video. And uh, let's start off with 24th place. Yeah, it's quite hard with a month of the window to go in the FL because, of course, the Euros has pushed back all the transfer work, the loans down from the Premier League. But... For me, I was quite confident with my 24th, and then it's a bit of a scrap after that. So in 24th, I've gone for a side, we mentioned it a few times yesterday in the National League one, just a side that's got closer and closer each year, and that's Colchester United. Now, I'm well aware I put them in there last year, they didn't go down, but they almost did, and if it wasn't for two very poor sides, they would have done. Well, to be honest, they did have Joe Taylor for the first half of that season so that's probably what kept them up well absolutely um, yeah joe taylor scored goals galore in the first half they've also now lost cameron mcgeehan who scored nine from midfield last year as well picked up a few assists too so while they have added quality out wide they're basically relying on a 34 year old lyle taylor to suddenly hit form again and start scoring goals in the fl which if he can of course they may avoid another relegation battle but I really think it's going to be difficult for them. And just recent history tells you they're going to be down there. So while it could be between a few sides, my safe pick is Colchester in 24th. I'm glad you've gone for Colchester because that's who I've gone for as well in 24th place. And we're not picking up, picking on uh, Colchester. It's just our simple opinion. And I, I, I totally agree with what you're saying. They have, we said we're teams in certain leagues, they when you claw your way through it, sometimes you're just going to get found out in the end. And I feel like this is the time for Colchester to go down. I'm just going to check the predictions last year. Did I even put Colchester in the bottom? <laughs> uh, you had them, I think, second bottom and I had them bottom. Did I and we both bottom? had Crawley as the other one. So that's what you can oh, make of God. our predictions. Yeah. <laughs> if yep, ever you absolutely. wanted a, a reason not to gamble <laughs> on our predictions, that yeah, is Yeah, please it. don't gamble. Yeah, please don't gamble. Um, yeah, <laughs> Crawley to go down they one they got promoted. Um, and in some style as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, uh, yeah, for me, Colchester. So, yeah, but I'm, I'm glad we're both on the same boat uh, with 24th place. Uh, right, 23rd. 23rd was a lot trickier. I've got it, I think, between five teams that I reckon could be in this mix. So I'll go in reverse order. So I had more come in there, but obviously they're out of transfer embargo now with Derek Adams again, turning into the Martin Allen of Morecambe. He's brought in 15 players at once. Harrogate are gradually sliding after a good first year. Not done an awful lot just yet, but I think they'll just about be all right. Accrington without John Coleman for a full season, lost their top goal scorer, but they've added a couple of decent defenders. I think they might go a bit closer. I think Swindon are in trouble. Last season, they're letting goals galore. They've lost nearly all of their goal scorers. I almost went for them to go down, but I thought that would be a little bit too bold again. And they just signed an experienced centre half to keep them up. So I've gone for the team name that probably is your most infamous moment on this channel, Craig. I've gone for Grimsby. I'll give you a clue. Oh, I'll give you a clue. Uh, oh, wow. the, the reason I've gone for Grimsby, look, it was tough for them last year. They've tried to address it this summer. They've signed an Icelandic winger as a little bit of a wild card option and a few solid EFL additions. But they made their squad a bit more robust. But I don't, I just don't think they've added much stardust. And it's it's going to be so tight down there. It's not like previous years where you've got four or five really poor squads. I do think it's going to be tight. Of course, there's obviously clubs that can run into troubles, get embargoes, whatever else. And there's a month of the window to go. I hope I'm wrong because I, I quite like the way they play. But I'm going to go for Grimsby just to go down in 23rd. I think my one's going to be a controversial pick. I picked a good cup team. Uh, but I feel like... This they could struggle this season. I've gone for Newport County. 
they've gambled on the manager, haven't they? Blimey. Yeah, I uh, just don't feel I don't I don't feel confident. I just feel like this season could be the shock season where a good team could will go down. I'm thinking it's going to be Newport. I probably am more likely wrong, as you can tell. Crawley Town to get finished bottom of League Two last season. Newport are going uh, off, everyone. <laughs> So bank on Newport getting promoted this season. No, I, I don't know why I picked Newport. I'll be honest, and it's not it's not disrespectful to Newport County fans. I do, I I do think like team obviously like Grinsby could be down there, Swindon could be down there, Harrogate could be down, like you said, um, Bromley. Obviously, first season in the EFL, I would say the pitch would do them a favour, but they obviously had to dig it up. But I'm just going for a shock one, and out of the blue, I'm going to go for Newport County. I will say on your front, if they lose their top goal scorer, they're in big trouble this year. And they've appointed a manager that's playing a, a good style of football. He's been the assistant of Birmingham and Swansea in that. But Rodney Parade is famously a pretty poor pitch a lot of the time. So it might end up being counterintuitive. But I, I, it could be anyone, couldn't it? In that if they don't right? have a good cut run this season, they'll be down there. Because they always bang, they always have a good cut run for some random reason, and they always get a Premier League side. They've had Man United last season. They've had Leicester in the past. They've had Tottenham. Um, as well, so um, if they don't have a good cup run, wait till November. If they are the first round of the FA Cup, mark my words, but they'll probably be in the top four. And like, I'm just... <laughs> it's, it's a bold call, I'll give you that. The bold, wild call. Um, and I'm gonna get absolutely hammered in the comments, and it's it's okay, it's okay. I, I, I won't read them. Um, <laughs> right, that's your bottom. Uh, two, let's move into the playoffs, seventh place. Seventh place, I've gone for a side that came down last year that a lot have put to struggle, actually. A few have sent their predictions in Discord and had them near the bottom of the league. But I've gone for Cheltenham Town. Now, they've changed an awful lot of players since relegation. They never replaced the eight goals of Alfie May last year. We both mentioned it when we had them in a relegation mix in League One. It cost them, and it could be the same this year. They've added Brian Bowman, who scored at this level before, but he's 32 now and he's not scored big goals for two or three seasons. But they've also gambled on a striker called Liam Dolson from uh, Bedford Town, who helped them to promotion to step three last year, locally to us, of course. So it's going to be interesting to see if he can make the step up. They've taken a few punts, which maybe don't make it a certain. But going back to your new point, Link, their manager is now Michael Flynn, and he's a manager I think is absolutely excellent at this level. So despite key departures to League One clubs, despite not having a real goal threat at the minute, I'm going to bank on them to get it right and just sneak in maybe with a late charge in seventh. And that, by the way, just for you, because I know you'll have them in your top seven, was at the expense of Chesterfield. Um. Okay. Ooh, okay. Okay. Interesting. Okay. Uh, my seventh place team, uh, to make it clear, but by the way, Cheltenham's not even in my top seven. Um, my seventh place team is Barrow. Okay. Uh, obviously, a good, a very good season. They felt obviously had a good start um, last season, and obviously petered away near the end and missed out on the playoffs. But Holger Street seems to be a bit of a, a real tough place to go. And if they can just keep it together for the most of the season, I think they can really push again. So I've been, I've been very impressed uh, with with Barry last season. I thought they they were unlucky not to be in there, um, but I think they could sneak in this year. So that's, I think they're a team to keep an eye on. Uh, right, sixth place. I've got to say, I, I do understand why you've gone from like I, I've got them down all the way in 14th, but I, I just think anyone down to there could make it in the playoffs potentially. I found this league the hardest to pick the playoffs, I've got to be honest with you. And in sixth place, I've gone for a side who I put to get in the top seven last year. They then sacked a manager who ended up mid table in the championship at the end of the year, and that man was Neil Harris from Gillingham because they made poor decisions off the pitch. They sacked Harris very early. They then made poor decisions afterwards. They've now gone for Mark Bonner, though, who did a really good job at Cambridge to get them into League One. And I feel that could be a blessing in disguise. It'll be a change in style from what Neil Harris did. And it'll be a change in style from how they played last year, where they were the second lowest scorers in League Two. But they've tried to address that pretty cleverly. They've taken Crew's top goal scorer from Elliot Nevitt from the playoffs. They've taken Accrington's top scorer in Jack Nolan, which adds about 30 League Two goals. They've pulled off a really good signing in Aaron Rowe from Huddersfield out wide as well. So I think they've addressed their big weakness. They've made a really good head coach appointment. And I think that if they, again, don't panic off the pitch, keep it sensible, because the, the new owners are doing a lot of good things off the pitch, just not got the manager calls right. I'll have them in the playoffs. So I'll go for Gillingham in sixth place. My sixth place is Port Vale. Um, 
obviously a good manager, Darren Moore. Um, Surprised he didn't keep him up. I, I I didn't. I thought it was too. I said too big of a job. I think it's too big of a job for Port Vale, uh, not for for Darren Moore, for example. But I think when they say like they didn't mean to go up, I didn't think it was the right time for them to go up. But after I think they got obviously they found out got found out quite a lot in League One, back in League Two this season. I do think they'll be strong. Darren Moore is a fantastic manager. He's guided teams to promotion. He's done it with obviously Chef Wednesday in that miracle game against Peterborough. And he's just a, a well-respected man. So I I have a lot of admiration for him. And I hope he does succeed because after the stick he got off, well, I say the stick he got, after the, the treatment he got at Sheffield Wednesday, I hope he does well with Port Vale. So I'm going for them in sixth place. Right, fifth. I'm going for the same team I put in fifth last year and the team that probably wished they finished fifth last year because they finished fourth and then got embarrassed by the team that finished seventh. They're your favourite team. They're everyone's favourite team. They're MK Dons. Um, look, it was a good season overall. Let's be honest. They played good football in the league season. Take aside the franchise stuff and the whatever fans hold against them. They played well. They are good players. But then they were humiliated in the playoffs. They just didn't turn up. Either leg against Crawley. It was dismal. Really, really poor. They have added a lot of EFL experience to the squad this summer. And I wonder if that was a, a result of that. But they've lost Max Dean's goals. He's gone off to Belgium for a couple of million quid. And they've replaced him with Callum Hendry from Salford and will need to score the goals for them. But ultimately, the main thing is they've got to concede less if they want a challenge. They've conceded 10 to 15 more goals than all of the sides in the top three last year. They have made good central defensive additions. They've brought Tom Carroll and Tommy Lee in the midfield. who will be good players on the ball. They'll help them control games. But I don't think they've got enough to get into the top three consistently. And defensively, it's going to take a while to settle. So I've put them in fifth again, and I'm sure they won't lose 8-1 on aggregate this time. Um, well, they're not in my top seven. Um, well, they were never going to be, were they? They were never going to be. Um, and um, I said this in the National League, it's nothing personal. I think they kind of is personal from a Luton fan. But I feel with them, obviously, bar, obviously that was the worst team performance I've ever seen in the playoffs. It was shocking. You should not. You should never lose 8-1 in the playoffs. And it came out of no, nowhere. Never, ever should. Never. Um, but I feel like that could really hinder them. This is, I think the, no, their, their confidence will be knocked. Could go either way. I agree with you. I feel like that, that could really burden them this season. I think to lose like that, especially considering, what, five goals at home in the, in the second leg of a playoff? That's, that's going to knock some confidence. I don't think they'll be up there. I really don't. And that's not being a Dean Dig as a Luton fan. I just feel that that could easily knock confidence. Right. Uh, my fifth place team is Crew. They were one of my narrow missing out teams. Uh, yeah, obviously got into the playoffs last season. Obviously, uh, they beat they got to the final, didn't they? Do yep. I remember right? Yeah, yeah, they did beat Doncaster. Surprise that I think, considering the run Doncaster was on. Yeah. Uh, and it, they lost the first leg at home two 0 and then came two nil. Yeah. Crazy, crazy playoff game. And uh, obviously, I don't know they lost their striker, as you said earlier, but crew, they're just they're always their crew. And obviously, they always want to go with youth and work their way up for the youth system, which I do admire. Uh, and I think they could be strong again this season. So if they keep it as they were, keep the performances up, they've got a good style of play, got a bit of balls in them to come back into these sort of games, I think they'll be strong again this season. So don't write them off. Uh, right, fourth place. Who's just missing out on the automatics? I'll be honest. I changed this in the 10 minutes between us doing the National League and the League Two recording because uh, I did have them in the top three, but I've kind of been tempted out because the, the bookies and everyone else has got them so far down. But I just think they're going to do all right. It's a big season for the manager. I've gone for Fleetwood. Now, they came down, but with Charlie Adam, they, they put in a bit of a spirited effort towards the end of the season. They improved the way they were playing. They started to pick up a few results. The difficulty here is there's going to be genuine expectation this year. They've made some good additions on paper. They've added three or four good defenders, which is desperately what they needed based on their defensive record last year. The likes of Zach Medley's done well at this level before as well. Um, in midfield, he's gone back and used some of his links from elsewhere. He signed a defender from Scottish football. He signed Matty Virtue, who would have been in the Liverpool youth team back when he was there as well. So he, he's using his links very well. And I, I just think that he's going to get a good season out of them. The worry is, do they start poorly and then panic and maybe pull the trigger? It happens so often. We saw it with Gillingham last year. 
they stick with him if they allow him to build and if he delivers i think fleetwood will possibly sneak in the top three but i'm gonna play safe and go for fourth i might change my mind now because i did make i feel like i picked this team i don't think they're actually gonna do it now well, actually, it's just going to be wrong. I won't lie. Uh, but but my fourth place team is Chesterfield. Um, they're the favourites. I know they're the favourites. And they they played some really good football. Obviously, they totally battered the National League last season. They've it's, got a League 2 squad already, haven't they? Let's uh, yeah. Like, Will Grigg, obviously. Paddy Madden signed for them. Shay uh, Dunkley's come in. Shay Dunkley, obviously, he's, played, had, he's got enough championship experience. Uh, DJ Old Acre in centre midfield, who I've been a fan for years. But I think the expectation, especially when you're a, a promoted team from the National League, is going to be a lot higher. The difference between League Two and the heart top half of the National League is pretty much the same. Uh, but I just feel like they might go on a bit of a bad run, which might lose out on the automatics, um, which is a shame because I, I said I'm a bit, I've got a soft spot for Chesterfield. Uh, right, so let's work out the playoff bracket. Uh, Danny Cody, you've got Fleetwood versus Cheltenham. Yep. I've gone for... I actually think my semi-finals are pretty clear-cut. I've gone for Fleetwood to beat Cheltenham in a battle of fourth seventh because I thought Fleetwood would potentially go up in the top three. Yeah. And MKV Gillingham? I have to go for Gillingham because I think they're a more solid side and MK Dons based on the playoffs last year, a bit like Barnet in the National League. You just can't predict them to win a playoff game unless you're you. Well, well, they're, they're... <laughs> well I, I just feel like, uh, obviously, but MK's record in, in the playoffs are, is pretty shocking as well. So, um, so obviously, Cheltenham and Gillingham final? Would you say? Fleetwood, Fleetwood. Oh, Fleetwood Gillingham, sorry. Fleetwood Gillingham final. So I will go... This is hard because I, I think Fleetwood have got a chance to the top three, but in the playoffs, I would back Gillingham. I think I might have backed them last year, to be fair. Um, but I just think Gillingham have got the solid side. They've got, I think we'll have the best defence of the four and then they've added goal for it. So I'm going to go Gillingham to go up, providing they stick with Mark Bonner. Uh, right, my one is Chesterfield v Barrow, uh, which Chesterfield will win. Uh, Crew v Port Vale. That's a, that's a tight game. That's a tight get. I'm going to go for Crew. Oh, and my final is Chesterfield v Crew. Heart or head? What's going to happen here? I'm going to go for Crew. It's a bold choice, but but I'm going to go for Crew. Right or wrongs of last season, Chesterfield will be fine. I, I'll be I'll be brutally honest. Chesterfield will be fine if they don't go up next season. I feel like if they can keep most of that squad, season after. No Great. problems at all. Right, top three. Uh, third place. Uh, third place, a team you've already mentioned and put in your playoffs. I'm imagining my top two will feature in your top three. We'll wait and I see. don't think so. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> um, in third place, I'm going to go for Port Vale. And I-, I mentioned it a bit earlier. I was a little bit surprised that Darren Moore couldn't keep them up, but he has been backed and they look in pretty good shape for this season. Look, they only come up pretty tightly in the playoffs the year before, and I predicted them to go down, so I can't be shocked by it. But look, they scored less than a goal a game last season. They've taken a few little punts to try and address it, so they bought Tolaj in from Aldershot in the National League, Payton from the Scottish Championship, and then added Jaden Stockley for a bit of experience as well. So between them, they only need one of those signings to work out and deliver them 15, 20 goals. They've got a solid keeper in Ben Amos. He's reunited with George Byers, who we had at Sheffield Wednesday, I'll be almost certain of them in the top seven, but I'll be honest, 10 minutes ago, I had Fleetwood in the top three and Port Vale in the playoffs. So I think it will be that tight, but I'm going to go Port Vale in third. So my third place I've wrote down is Carlisle. Okay. I had them very close for the playoffs, to be fair. And I don't know why. (laughs) To be honest. I'm I'm... Charlie Wyke effect. (laughs) Well, yeah. And obviously, he's a fantastic striker. And obviously, he's had his his problems in the p- a couple of years, but I'm glad he's obviously back playing yeah. anyway. Um, obviously, they had a disastrous season last uh, season in, in League One. Another team that probably shouldn't have gone up at the time, but did go up. Fair play. Um, it's so tight, though, isn't it, at the top of the league? Like, you look at the playoff race last season, again, there's tight. one or two points between everyone. Anyone from 14th or 15th up can realistically look and say, I'll be in the playoffs or promote it. Yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go for it. I'm gonna go Carlisle. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna stick with what I wrote. Yeah, I can um, see it. I can see it. it, it I think they could sneak ahead of Chesterfield. Why did I read? Why did I write that? 
Uh, but yeah, I'm going to go for Carlisle. Um, why not? Carlisle. Uh, right, second place. My second place, look, there are rules in football and we don't make them, but we have to follow them. And the rules of football, Craig, if you sign Anthony Sarsovic, you get promoted. It's as simple as that. Bradford City are going to finish in second place. Look, they fin- you've got to remember, they finished last season on fire. They were dismal for the first half of the year. They finished with, I think, five successive wins at the end of the season. Only missed out on the playoffs by a point in the end, which was remarkable. They hit form a little too late. They couldn't get consistency early in the season. They've also got a returning loan player in Jake Young, who scored nearly 20 for Swindon last year. So they've got goals coming back into the team without having to pay for them. They've also added experienced EFL players to the squad. Nothing stand out, but just solid, experienced pros. And I think with that, they'll find a bit more consistency. And we've mentioned it. It's a much more open league too than last season. A lot of the leagues are more open than last year. And Bradford, with the size of the club, the amount of season tickets sold, and with the additions they've made, if they get it right, they should be the best and the biggest side in league two. On paper, they should be. But whether or not they will, I don't know. They failed us a few times, but I'm going for them in seconds. I'm going for Bradford in seconds as well. There we <laughs> maybe go. Maybe we were right. Oh, maybe we were right. Uh, yeah, no, I, I, I think the last point that you made up, we always go for Bradford and they always disappoint us. Um, but Mansfield was the same till last Mansfield year. Mansfield was the state, same and they we didn't predict them and they done it. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I, I think Bradford as well. Um, I forgot about the Anthony Sarsovic effect. Um and obviously, we did an interview with Andy Sarsovic, and I think his interview with us led to promotions. Um, so um, I'll take the credit for that as I interviewed him. <laughs> but so please do check that out in the uh, it, it's some it's somewhere in the channel. The interview with Anthony Sarsovic from a few years ago. I'm gonna go for Bradford. They should do it. They should do. It. I should say, big club. They should be higher up in the football league, and it's disappointing that they can't do that for some random reason. Uh, right, uh, the, your winner. Have we gone the same again? I, I reckon we feel have. like we have. I reckon we have. I'm now, going... I said no earlier. Now I feel like we have. I think we have as well. Because I think that I've gone for the two teams that finished the season strongest, basically. It was a brilliant second half of the season. And after the first leg of the playoff semi-finals, I would have had them as a shoe in to win them. I've gone oh, for sold. Them. I've gone oh, for sold. Doncaster Rovers. Yeah. I, I just I thought two and up away from up. I have no idea what happened at home. Like they started so badly and it fell apart. But look, I want to give them some credit because they were rewarded. They were twenty second in I think December. They stuck with Grant McCann. We saw so many clubs just panicking. We talked about it in a championship every other week, and a lot of them went down. They stuck with him. They got on a roll. They went into the playoffs, and they should have got better. They should have done better in them. But they're in a really good position for this year. They've lightened the mood at the club by bringing back a legend in Billy Sharp. I know he's 38. He's not going to be quite the same, but it was important for the club to have that that lifting of the mood earlier in the summer. I really like the sign of Joe Sabara. I know he had a, a minor heart problem last summer at Solihull, but he was brilliant prior to that. And I think if he gets going, he could be a star at League Two level. They've made other good young additions as well. They've bolstered the squad. The squad's already strong. And if they start like they finished last year, I don't think they have to worry about the playoffs. I'd be very confident of them in the top three, but I couldn't see anyone beating them. So I've gone for them top. Totally agree. Totally agree with Doncaster. Um, that form from the start of the year to obviously the playoffs, unbelievable, unbelievable run. And obviously if they had that early, that form early in the season, they would probably would have been the top two, let alone yep. uh, obviously making the playoffs. So, Grant McCann's a fantastic, is a very good coach. Obviously, you stuck by him, trust him. And yeah, I, I, after that first leg, tuning away from home, I was I was more than certain, like, yeah, they're in the final. And obviously, I'd, as you said, they I think they were, sadly. Yeah, I think they they probably got ahead of themselves. But um, I, I do feel that the, they are very strong and I think they're going to win it. Right, let's have a quick recap what we have predicted for the League 2 season in 24-25. Uh, starting off with the relegated teams in 24th place, it is we both gone for Colchester United. Uh, Daniel Cody has gone for Grinsby in 23rd. I've gone for Newport County in the playoffs in seventh place. Daniel Cody has gone for Cheltenham. Sixth place, he's gone for Gillingham. Fifth place has gone for MK. And fourth place is Fleetwood with Gillingham winning the playoffs. Uh, for me, uh, Barrow in seventh, Port Vale sixth, Crew in fifth, and Chesterfield in fourth with Crew winning the playoffs. Uh, and then for the promoted sides, 
uh, in third place with Daniel Cody is Port Vale. Uh, and for me is Carlisle in third. And both our second and first place is Bradford and Doncaster, respectfully. And those are our predictions for League Two. Let us know down in the comments what you predict will happen in League Two this season. Who will go up? Who will go down? Who will stay in the middle? Please let us know in the comments down below. Uh, you can join us on the Fantasy EFL in the link down below as well. So please do check that out and compete with me, Daniel, and Charlie's teams. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the Sport Podcast, and you can find us on all the socials, your TikToks, your X's, your Instagrams on this football podcast. And we'll see you next time.